All right, good morning. Welcome back to Instick Garage. So in this week's episode, I'm going to continue working away on my Project Snowman Smoking the Bandit replica truck. Egotistical son of a bitch. And if you follow the last episode, you'll know that I actually got the truck good enough to take it for a drive. But it's just not good enough to call it done. So this project still needs a few more things. And one of the ones that was bugging me the most is when I was driving it, I noticed that the windshield glass is just garbage. So of course I got the big bang over there. Some remnants of some tuck tape when I had the windshield all blocked off. And then when I was driving it towards the sun, I noticed that the, the glass is just sandblasted and the panels need to be replaced. And I could have just taken the easy way and drove the truck over to Crystal Glass or some glass shop and had them do it. But then I thought, you know what? I've done everything else in this truck myself. Why stop now? So today we're gonna actually learn how to swap windshield glass. I mean, how hard could it be? Okay, so I'm all set up with my little platform here. And I've actually been using these for a long time. I uh, started using them on the frame rails of the peat. So they've come in, in real handy, but one thing I've learned is to make sure you strap them down because of course the rad supports are just in the middle. And when you step off the ladder and step on this, it can flip it up and, and you go flying. So I like to think I get smarter as I get older. Uh, looks like I need to tighten those a touch. There. Okay, so the other thing I noticed now that I'm up here is I probably should have swapped this windshield glass when the visor was off. But again, for those viewers that are following along and are building your own trucks, don't take my lead. Hopefully you can learn from my back asswards way of, of building trucks in the wrong order. <laughs> but yeah, I think I could still make this work leaving the visor on there. So what i need to do first is to pop out this this inner bead here get a screwdriver and i think once i pop that out all the way around it takes the tension off the rubber boot and allows you to pop the glass out so it shouldn't be too hard i think uh i think hopefully it comes out of there rather easy but let's find out sure don't need a lot of fancy tools to do this oh, oh of course Bunch of different pieces. Give okay. Sally. Okay. Now what? <laughs> Okay, I think I need some, some more tools and probably some gloves. Maybe some glass breaks. These have pulled and hurt my neck in 1988. Come on. Oh, oh. Well, now we have to replace it. Got a big crack in it. Oh, now I'm breaking it. Okay, glass can't take prying on one side. That's okay, as long as it doesn't break into a bunch of little pieces. Just gotta get started. Oh, damn it. Oh. Come on, Mark, get it out of here in one piece. I do not want to pick up broken glass. It's all over in the engine compartment. Get that later. Oh, OK. 
Okay, now we're making progress. Come on. Come on. There. Okay. One down without turning it into a thousand pieces. Okay. Yeah, so then this the seal should just come out of here, but I'm wondering if I should just reuse the seal. Take the old one back. I mean, it's not dry rotted or cracked. I wonder if Kenworth would even refund my money, but I suppose it's brand new. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> I could be like the Terminator now and reach in and grab the T-1000. Turn a corner and install in the new one. Now is this is this just soft? Yeah, there's no there's no post, there's no center post there. So it's just the two pieces of glass that hold it on. Oh, there it goes. Driver too, right? Well, I'm getting better. I didn't break this one up quite as bad. Yeah, gotta fix that. Maybe that'll be the next project after I get done with this. Well, I guess I got the new rubber. Why not? Put it on there, Mark. It's so cheap. Being new, it's probably got, uh, it'll be a little softer and hopefully easier to install the glass. Okay. Now, the slot for that little bead obviously goes to the outside. And looks like there's a point there. Well, I guess it'd be the same point because it's, it's flat glass, so I don't think I can get this wrong. Okay, that, that was a mistake. I should have left the old one in there. That was just a brutal job. I'm trying to put that all the way in. Oh. Should have left well enough alone, but it's in now, so let's see if we can put some glass in. Okay. Now, I don't know if these are two different part numbers or not, or if they're exactly the same shape. Okay, so that one, it's got the, the branding down at the bottom right and the straight edge on the left. So this must be the driver's side. So I picked the wrong one. Well, I guess what difference does it make? I can start on the driver's side first. So a friend of mine was saying to use some soapy water. To try and help this windshield fall into place and that made good sense to me. Oh, you fell off again. Okay. okay. Get in there. So I made myself a little plastic tool because you don't want to use metal and it looks like it, not, it might not be thin enough. Oh, this isn't even close. What the hell? Huh. 
Okay, attempt one, fail. That was awful. I wonder, do you set the glass in in the hoop first and then try and set it in the truck? No, but then you'd have two that you'd be trying to hold on to. Uh, learning as we go, folks. Maybe, maybe I should call Crystal Glass and they've got a, someone that could come out and do this for me. Yeah. God hates a coward. Let's keep trying. Let's see if it's the same damn size. Amazing that that's gonna fit in there. <sighs> oh, holy cow! What did I get myself into here? Sir, you have it, Keen. Hit me, hit me, hit me. You took my clean, baby. What'd you do? Sir, please don't touch the cards. Sir, please don't break the glass. What the hell? Oh, come on! This is not an easy job by any means. Well, I guess I could try, try the other way. Where you put it on the glass, off the truck, and then try and... That, maybe that's where the rope trip comes in. Oh, I don't know, folks. I guess this is a... This is a skill you need to be taught. You can't just fumble through on your own. I wonder, okay, try something else. If I'm gonna pull this out of here, after all that work putting it in. Oh, this is fun, this is fun. Try another way here. Maybe, maybe the trick is Put the glass in the boot first, and I'm going to use the old boot. Just because it doesn't seem as stiff as the uh, as the new one. And I'm going to need all the assistance I can get here. Okay, well that fits. Now, how do you get this on the truck? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there, done. Very sparkly, very twinkly. Now, I wonder if this is where the, I think I see where the rope comes in. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm on the right path now. I actually dug around and found a few more videos to try and determine what the rope trick was. I always heard a lot of people talk about the rope trick, but I never saw it in action. So essentially what the rope trick is, is you put a piece of like parachute cord or small rope 
around the outer edge of the seal. And that is, that is not gonna work. They're both the same. Oh, damn it. Okay, well, that's a problem. Is there a left glass and a right glass? Oh. So the, the Packard is gonna have to go on the inside, on the passenger side. Well, I guess I don't really have an option. So I will finish putting the glass in the rubber seal here. And then the rope trick is essentially, I'm gonna use wire, but you're gonna put the wire or the rope in this slot. I'm gonna use wire because it's a pretty small slot here. And you go all the way around and then you lay this thing in there, which is gonna be tricky as hell with two windshields. Oh, this is this maybe is a job where a guy could have a second set of hands, but we'll try it. Hope they don't break nothing. And then when you set it into the can get this out of here because we don't need it. When you set it in there, then you just pull the wire all the way around and it pops the pops the uh, seal over the lip, over the fiberglass lip. Again, this is not gonna be an easy endeavor, but we'll try it. trying here. Come on, snap into place, you bugger. No, 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 you stay in there, damn it. Oh, oh why is it so hard? Oh. Okay. Well, one step closer. Progress. So, rope trick. Again, I'm gonna use wire. Because I don't have any rope that's that size. But I think this will still work. Plus it fits nice in the little slot there. So I'm going to put the wire in all the way around. Stay. I've got a new respect for people that install windshield glass. Okay, something like that. See the, the windshield, or the windscreens in the cab over, I think it'll be easier because they're just one panel at a time. There's a fiberglass post in between. You don't have two pieces of glass at the same time. Now, I guess I'll lift it higher than it needs to be and get the bottom started. Enjoying following this on along at home because this is no fun actually doing it. But what a sense of accomplishment when you actually get it done, Mark. Yeah, great. That's what I'm looking for. This is pretty tricky. Okay. Easy, don't get so rammy. Now, 
gas. Start working my way this way. So it's pulling the wire out and it should just pop the pop the edge of that lip right over the fiberglass like I was saying. Okay. Now here's where it gets tricky. Because it's not pushed all the way. Well, I guess I could try. This might take a few iterations. Okay, come on. Just walk your way over that edge. Okay, but now the glass isn't in there. Oh, that's actually looking good. Right where it's supposed to be. Hey! <laughs> okay, I think we're on the right path. See, a good idea whoever came up with that. Hmm. Again though, I need someone pushing from the outside. is in place. Man, what a ton of work. But I didn't break it. And it's sitting where it should be. Good job, paper towels. Oh, good. <laughs> oh. Wow, that is a that is a job and a half. Okay, well, home stretch now. Big, big step forward by getting those glass windows in there without breaking them. So I'm pretty happy about that. Actually really happy about that. At least that's behind me. I uh, think I'll be pretty hard pressed to do it again, but I guess I gotta do it in the peat and in the, in the cab over, but maybe with practice it gets easier. Anyway, so what I need to do now to finish the job is to put in the lock I don't know, it's called the lock, not a lock ring, but kind of a, a locking seal, I guess. And what I should have, uh, you know, is this special lock seal insertion tool. But I looked on Amazon, it's gonna take me about a week to get. And, uh, you know, here at Twin Stick Garage, I always believe in using the wrong tool for the right job. So what I was thinking I could do is, this doesn't seem that exotic. Essentially what it's doing, it's, it's just opening up the gap here. Because right now with the, with the glass in there, it's got this gap, this opening kind of squeezed together like that. So what this tool does is the, is the lock seal goes through there like that, and it basically just goes along and opens and forces open the uh, gap wide enough for this lock seal to go in there, and you just kind of push it all the way around, and it lays it in there. So what I was thinking I could do is this not, doesn't look that exotic. I was just gonna take a, an old screwdriver that I could sacrifice for this, and I'm gonna drill a hole in it wide enough for the seal to go through, and then I'll just heat it up, bend it down, and then just grind the edges to a nice kind of rounded point, and that should be the tool that I can use to go all the way around and put the lock ring in there and, and, uh, and call her a day on the windshield install. Sweet. Now I got a hole big enough for the seal to go through, so now I just need to heat it up and bend it to make that little bend. I know, I know, I could use a proper set of torches. To be honest, I sure could have used them when I took that fifth wheel off of there. 
Oh boy, was that ever a ton of work. What a pain. And then, it's gonna bend the other way for the last little part. At the other end of the hole. And again, lots of soapy water because you don't want this to catch. And it's a little triangle shape, I don't know if you can see it there. So I believe the point goes down in there and then it, it spreads out and pushes it against the glass. Once I get it started, I think this is gonna work good. Oh yeah, sweet. Homemade tools for the win. Oh, that is working good. I should get a close up so you can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, pretty simple. And lots of soapy water. Don't want it to catch. But the tool is just basically opening up the gap and then it just lays in the, the lock strip right behind it. That's interesting, it stretched it. I guess that makes sense, put a lot of pressure on it. Oh, that's like brand new from Kenworth. They gave me 20 feet of this locking bead and that looks like it's going to be more than enough, so that's good. Would have sucked if there wasn't enough there. Okay, there we go. Oh, this corner was easier because I could I had room to, I had room to spin the tool around. Oh, good stuff. So yeah, what was the learning today, folks? Definitely do this if you can when your visor is off. That would make it easier. And get two people, get a helper. That would make it easier too. Oh, look at that. Come on. Final push. I wonder, I got a little bit of a gap between the two. Maybe I'll get a little, little dollop or blob of silicone sealant and I'll just push that in there. Touch more. There you go. New glass on a on an old Kenworth. I tell you nothing, nothing snaps up a truck like putting a new windshield in. Makes it feel new again. Oh, that was a was a pain in the butt, but man, now it feels like like it's a rebuild, rebuilt project that's almost finished. Looking through glass like that. Now I noticed, for whatever reason, uh, oh, this seat is terrible. <laughs> but it matches the movie, so I'm gonna keep it. But what I noticed was, oh, actually it's kind of popped itself back up. So uh, when I was first putting the windshield in, I noticed there was still some red showing. Um, well, I know what it was. There was still some red showing, so I was gonna just use a paintbrush and, uh, and paint it black. But what ended up happening was when I put that locking strip in there, it, pre it, it pushed against a little more and raised it up and now it's all hidden again. So that's cool. You can't even tell that it was red inside. Well, I don't know if that's gonna help people. I don't know if this video is gonna help people with doing their own windows in their semi trucks or or scare them off, but I suppose it wasn't that bad. 
And like I say, I probably saved, I probably saved, a, I don't know, I'm guessing a couple hundred at least installing it myself as opposed to paying someone. And the, the sense of personal satisfaction is second to none. <laughs> All right, let's see what that looks like from the outside. There, how does that look? Oh, like the brand new Kenworth. Yeah, that really snapped it up. That was something that's been bugging me for a while. Another project done, and one step closer to one step closer to being finished. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and don't ever forget if you got it, the trucker brought it.